turn it on and actually prove whatever the customer's telling you is exactly the problem. Because the customer might, might not think it's heating when it is. It might have a ventilation problem, but they're saying, yeah, it's running, but it's not drying my clothes. It's not getting hot. When it is getting hot, but it's not venting out. But in this case, we tested the dryer. The dryer was running. There was no heat at all. So first thing I want to do is I want to look at the circuit for the drive motor. So power comes in here. When the motor's running, the centrifugal switch goes around the start switch. And this is the actual path once the motor's getting up to speed. Because when it's off, we're going to put power through both windings. And we're going to go up, waiting for the customer to press start. <coughs> but once they let go, that start switch is going to open. And it, normally, if that switch would open, that's how the motor would get power. But once the motor gets up to speed, the centrifugal switch will jump over to this side, 5 to 6M, and continue to keep power through the main winding going around the start winding. But regardless, and, and, and I don't want to get in too much to, the, to that operation of that circuit, but that is what we know is working. We don't know if the timer is running right now. <coughs> but we do know that we pressed it on, the motor started running, the drum is turning, and the machine's running, but we notice that there's no heat coming out, okay? So by it running, the motor's connected from what to what? It's connected from line one to what? Neutral. To neutral. Mm -hmm. And because the motor is working, I know that that power is good. So I don't two, even need to put a meter. So you know that 240 is going to the machine? Not 240. Mm -hmm. Because line one to neutral, is here and that's 120 volts this line and this line at the top are not wires okay let me just clear it up just for a second if i can go back far enough oops okay so this is the plug in the wall this neutral circle is the plug in the wall and that line two is the plug in the wall You'll either say it's the plug or these three screws right here. Line one, neutral in the middle, and line two. It's a little hard for you guys to see where you are, but there's a black wire, white wire, and red wire. And if you look here, line one is black, neutral is white, and red is line two. So if the motor is running, if you look, it's connected from line one to neutral. And that is... 120 volts between line one and neutral. So these lines with the arrows are just saying from there to there is 120. They're not, those horizontal arrows are not wires on the diagram. The wire ends right here. But you see line one to line two is 240. The one thing they don't tell you is line two to neutral. How much is that? 120. It's 120 also. Okay. 120, 120, and together, 240. Now, could you get away with 218, 220? Yes, that's right. Even at 210, the dryer will run and heat. That means power had to come in and go all the way to the heater here. And then line two had to come in and go all the way to the heater there. In order for my meter to give me a 240 volt reading, I put my meter on the heater, that rhymes, put my meter on the heater. That's the same thing as put my meter here on the diagram. Telling me 240 is telling me what? What is that information telling me? That's your heater getting the, the, power. The power's good. Heater's getting power, but I need more. The power is going all the way onto the element. That is correct, but I want a little more information. What is it telling me? That your line one and your line two, you're getting power from your line one and line two from your outlet. I mean, the, 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 it's not what I'm looking for. That means the element is bad. Yes and no. That means the element's bad because I have power to oh, it, and sure it's not enough. working, but the opposite, what is good? What is good? The wires? 
No, the motor. Not just the, the wires. The motor, the, wait. The, the, the operating the timer, unit that they're not going Yeah, the thermostats, mm -hmm. the operating. Because it's not showing no resistance on that No, motor. we're that not really checking not. resistance. We're okay. checking voltage. Yeah, bro, okay. Dry runs does not heat. Mm -hmm. I check voltage to my element. I have voltage. The element, the element's bad, but a voltage reading here means that all of these parts are good because I would not get a voltage reading there mm -hmm. if it's good. Right, so you really check that whole line. I am checking not the element with voltage. I'm checking here, I'm checking the circuit. If I have voltage, the circuit's good. The element's bad. It's the only thing left in the circuit. If I don't have voltage, I have to figure out why. Right. Oh, okay. I said you said when you don't have voltage, my intent will probably either be one of those safety switches or it'll be that it'll be somewhere along that line. If you do have voltage, you know that your heater is bad because you it, but you but know if that, you do have voltage. Well, yes. If you do have voltage, you know that your heat is bad, but you also know that yeah. your thermal fuse is working, your the time is operating working. and everything. The, you know, the thermal stats, yeah. the thermal stats are working. Everything okay. is working. So let, let's continue with the hypothetical problem. And I say hypothetical because uh, this is an actual problem we did have, but it's not here. So guess what? I, I called the guy, check voltage to the element. Right here. He says, Richard, I don't have no voltage. I have voltage here, but I have no voltage there. Oh, wait, so you have voltage going to line At the two. wall, but yeah, I don't have it at the heater when the dryer is running. Okay. We are in time dry in a cycle that is calling for heat. We're not in a cycle where there's no heat and the drum just right. runs, like air right. dry. Right. What do we do now? You check, check your thermostat. Check, you check, check the, your, uh, the your, your, your operating fuse. Yeah, okay. But well, let's talk for a second because yes, we have a bunch of parts to check. Right. The batteries. We pause it for a second. So we don't have voltage. We have voltage here. That means all the parts in the in the machine are good because they're sending voltage to here. Right. But in this case, we don't have voltage. And the tech told me, oh, I changed the element already. So one of the things we need to know is we need to know where our problem is. Yeah. We can randomly pick and choose parts and start testing each part one by one. Mm -hmm. Voltage test is better, but here's the problem. A lot of guys like to go like from this terminal to ground or this terminal to ground mm -hmm. in a 240 volt circuit, mm -hmm. in this circuit here, in a 240 volt circuit, neutral and ground are the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if you touch anywhere to ground, you're going to have 120 volts. Mm -hmm. Even let's just say this switch is open. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I touch this terminal to ground, well, line one is going to go right up to that dot. Mm -hmm. Okay? Pause that for a second. Um, so any, anything from here to here is line one. Line one stops here. It can't go any further. But you're saying, yeah, but so then if I touch this one to ground, I'm not going to get a reading because line one stopped here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, is that line two comes from here and will back me through the heater up to this point and give me line two here and I'll have 120. Yeah. So in a 240 volt circuit, we never use ground because whether the switch is closed or open, I'll have voltage 120 volts right. in the entire circuit. That is okay. not a good test. Okay. okay. Now I do want to go into ohms because I normally push voltage tests and, and I'll compare it to voltage, but I want to do an ohms test. Now the question, the statement I had was, Here's the heater. We don't have voltage to the heater. Which way do I go? Do I go back towards line one to find my problem, or do I go line two to find my problem? And I mean, if I don't have voltage here, mm -hmm. this wire could be bad, right? Mm -hmm. 
That switch could be bad, mm -hmm. or that wire could be bad, right? Mm -hmm. Well, any one of these components or wires can also be bad. So I could start one by one testing each one of those components to try to find out which one's bad. And if I have a broken wire, owning out the individual parts like the thermostats or the thermal fuses or cutoffs won't tell me if the wire is bad. Now I have to check each wire individually. Where voltage reduces some of those tests. Right. And I'm not gonna get into that today. But the question was, let's see if we can narrow down the problem. First of all, voltage comes in here, right? I know for a fact I have voltage all the way to letter B on that timer. And how do I know that? Will you say it again? I put that yellow line up to letter B, light blue wire on that mm -hmm. timer. Mm -hmm. How do I know voltage is there? I don't have a meter yet. How do I know voltage is there? Because it's coming in. The, the motor is running. The, the motor is running. You hear the timer motor. So voltage, no, the motor. Oh, you're on the motor, okay. The motor is running, yeah, so motor. that switch okay. has to be good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So listen, this, this is important. This is troubleshooting. I know the dryer is running. I could just look at a diagram and say, if this part is running, I know these parts in the diagram are good because the only way that motor will run is if those switches are good. Mm -hmm. So I haven't put a meter on anything yet. I'm using the motor of the machine as a test meter to tell me if that circuit's good. Okay? So I at least want to know if this switch is good going back, right? Mm -hmm. So I told, I told the tech, do me a favor. Put an ohm meter on one of the heaters. It doesn't matter which side right now. And I want you to go to black on the timer. And I want you to check ohms. Now, when we do a voltage test, I put them both on the heater, I'm checking the circuit back. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing an ohms test, let me change the color again, just so it, I do an ohms test here and here. I'm checking everything in between mm -hmm. when I'm doing ohms test. So I'm checking everything here. If all the switches and thermal fuel on amp test, let's just say this wire is broke here, like we said, there's no amperage. There's voltage here, but it's not flowing. Mm -hmm. The heater's broke. There's no amperage. This thermostat broke. There's no amperage. Okay. Same way the other way you check from line one to the heater, and you should get um, <clears throat> you should check that checking the line between everything. Well, uh, the high limit operating thermal fuels. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so, timer. So I'm gonna bring this stuff okay, over okay, there okay, for okay. a second. Okay. 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 I get it. Okay. Okay, so these are two different thermostats. This one is the high limit thermostat, and this one's the operating thermostat. I didn't open this one up. This one has like a little heater inside. Uh, we'll do that another day. But I want to explain why we call it what we call it and how it works. So if you understand how it works, it makes it easier to troubleshoot it. So first of all, right here is where the two wire terminals are on the, on the thermostat. And that's the actual switch. If you guys look at it closely, a little plastic piece inside of there goes like this and pushes up on the switch. Can you see how the switch goes up? Yes. Okay. See how the switch goes up? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. This is how the switch goes up. So normally that switch is closed, so power can go through to the heating element. But when it gets hot enough, a piece inside the thermostat cycles and pushes that up. And when it pushes it up, power can't go through. Okay. Jumps right out of my hand. So um, you can look at the points of that thermostat and see that they're a little burnt. I'll let you look at them when I'm done. So over a period of time, these switches opening and closing, every time they open and close, a little electric arc happens and burns the points of that switch. 
okay? Now we call these things thermostats, and the same thing like a thermostat in a refrigerator, we call them a defrost thermostat. It's the same thing, it cycles the same way. Now what cycles is this little round disc. This little round disc is manufactured with two different metals. What do we call that? Bimetal. So another name for a thermostat is a bimetal. Like a defrost thermostat may also be called a defrost bimetal. They have these little discs inside of them. A dryer thermostat has this disc inside. It's a bimetal. So if you look at it closely, it's curved downward. So it would be underneath this little pin here, and it would not be pushing the switch up because the switch is normally closed. But it's curved like this, and there's a metal piece like this on the bottom holding that disc in place. Okay, now what happens is when this disc is heated, instead of it curved this way, it's going to curve the other way, and what it would do would be pushing up on this plunger and opening the switch. When it cools down, it goes back to its original shape, and the switch closes again. So that's how the dryer cycles on and off. The difference in these two thermostats is that this one is 155 degrees, the operating thermostat. This one's 250 to 325, this high limit thermostat. The main difference is this little bimetal disc inside, the temperature at which it cycles. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on here and I'm going to heat it up. Let's see if I can get it to cycle, okay? I don't know if it did or not already. I don't think it did. Hold on. I'm going to heat it from underneath. Give it a second. Shouldn't take that long. Did. It did? I'm not sure. Well, yeah. it, 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 it looks like it's curved up. Yeah, it curved up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then it just reset. <laughs> <laughs> so if I heat it up again, it didn't take long. Okay. So yeah. now, now it's curved up. Can you yeah. see now all the edges are off the down. table? Yeah. So now I'm going to heat it up. So actually, it would be this way inside the... Um, yes. No, it would be this way, right? right? So, so we want it to pop it up to open up the thermostat. So if I heat it, watch the outer edges go flat. Okay, right there it moved. I mm -hmm. saw. I could yeah, see the reflection. See flat, so then when it cools down, three, two, one. Let's give it a second to cool down and pop up. No, oh, it's already up. Yeah, no, it's done. It's like this. Yeah, it went back. Yeah, it, went back. it didn't get hot it enough. It didn't get hot, yeah. So if I, if I put it on here, I can get the heat underneath it, maybe. Mm. Yeah. So that, that's the pop, and then when it cools down, it should reset. Yeah, it reset. Okay, so what this piece does is it's pushing. When it pops the first time, it's pushing the switch open, and the heater goes off. Right. So now this piece cools down. And it closes back up yeah. again, and that's how we cycle on and off. Yeah. These metals, I don't know how they do it, but they figure out what metals and in what way to produce it so it cycles at that specific temperature. Pretty neat, huh? Mm -hmm. So these thermostats and these thermal cutoffs all work on a similar principle of a cycling. And some of them know when they cycle, they don't reset. Those are usually cutoffs or thermal fuses. And sometimes they don't use like a bimetal. They use something that at a certain temperature, it just opens up like a fuse. All right. So any questions about what we talked about today? We can do voltage test or we can do ohms test, but we need to know when we're ohms testing, when I'm ohms testing, I'm checking all the parts in between. When I'm voltage testing, I'm not checking the parts in between. I'm checking everything up to that point to see if that is good. Because if anything is broken in that circuit up to that point, I won't have voltage there. So having voltage tells me everything from my meter back to the plug is good. 
doing an Ohm's test from the same point is everything in between, not back to the plug, but the other way. Okay? Now, how long do you think it would have taken you to find that problem in a dryer in someone's home? If done properly, you may be talking like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Any on, job that right. you work on, on average, is 10 to 15 minutes to find the answer in troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. If you're spending more than 10 or 15 minutes, you probably will not find the answer unless you called somebody. <laughs> you know, what was what it like... Uh, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? You got one oh, call, got a one. <laughs> call a friend? Call a friend? Call a friend, yeah. Well, let me call Z. Well, let, well, let me, me ask you a question. Z. Well, I get it, though. Okay. I'm changing this element mm -hmm. in someone's house. Mm -hmm. This is right here in the open. Yeah. Yeah. He said he changed the thermostats before he changed the element. Mm -hmm. Didn't even bother to look. Didn't even bother to see if he had voltage to the element. Even they true. never test check the whole element. Machine. Yeah, check the machine. Mm -hmm. Never checked anything else. Yeah. Just assume that it was running. Yeah. Everything looked good. I'm going to order the element. So he, yeah. Okay? So, Mr. Riz, would it make a good practice to when you do start running your voltage check to also check, just check at the uh, terminal right here? I so, would check here before I checked anything else. Right. I, I, I mean, I, I told you guys the story. Right. right. One year in Orlando, we were competing at the state contest. It was a dryer just like this from Sears. Sears brought it for the competition, but they had to put a cord on here. Mm -hmm. Brand new cord, almost a brand new machine. And it might have been used return, but whatever. Yeah. The machine was supposedly working. So the guys installed the cord right then and there, plug it into the wall, <laughs> and the dryer didn't heat. So they check power in the wall where the plug was, and they have 240. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a burnt wire because they just installed it here. So then they, they took the machine apart. They checked the heaters. They checked the thermostats. They checked the timer. They're ohming everything out. You know what the problem was? Bad the back. Brand new power cord. Yeah. They took a brand new power cord out of a package mm -hmm. and screwed it on here. At the wall, it had 240. When they went here, they didn't. The cord itself was bad from here to the wall. So the wall, everything looked good. But right on the back of the machine, it did not. So it, if I had dryer run on heat, I would check this very first. If I had power here, then I go back and check the outlet in the wall just to make sure it's not the cord. So you do, okay, that, yeah, yeah. That I go here and I go back. Then go to the wall. Okay, yeah. that's what I want. If I have it here, yeah. And something's not working. Now I gotta check that yeah. circuit. I gotta break. What you notice one thing is every time I'm talking to you about troubleshooting, mm -hmm. I'm breaking the circuit down. Whether it's a motor circuit or an it's element true. circuit, right. when you troubleshoot a machine, we don't look at the whole diagram and everything on the diagram. It's a mess. It's complicated. Yeah. You know, it's like trying to find a word in an entire book. But if we can narrow it down to what chapter is that word in, or, or what page is that word on, it's easier to find. And when we're troubleshooting a machine, if we can identify what circuit in the machine is not working, and troubleshoot just that circuit, we eliminate everything else. We don't bother to check it at all. We have to isolate the circuit and check just the components in that circuit, because one of them are the reason why it's running in that heat. Okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there was a question about if you check voltage to the heater and you don't have the voltage to the heater but you have it at the, at, the, at the back of the machine. Okay? I said that if you put your voltmeter on the heating element here and it says zero volts, one of the things we want to do is we want to backtrack and I'll move this one over to here. So now I got one meter lead here and one meter lead here and all of a sudden I got 240 volts. So my statement was, if you check to the heater and it says zero, 
and you move one meter lead back like from line one, and now all of a sudden you have proper voltage, my statement was the problem is this side of my circuit. Because look, I have voltage here. Look at it the opposite way. Um, if I have voltage here, and I move that meter lead to here, and it reads zero, doesn't it mean I lost it somewhere here? Okay. If, if I have both meter leads, I take one meter lead, and I put it on the heater, and I have the other meter lead here, and it says 240 mm -hmm. volts. Yeah. In order for me to have voltage at these two points, line two has to be good. Because I, I need line one and line two to get 240. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to have 240, I have to have one meter lead here, and one meter lead here, and it says 240. When I go down to the heater, all of a sudden it says zero. I, I didn't lose it on line two. I just lost it on line one, and because there's a break on line one somewhere, that's why my meter says zero volts. Does on that make two. sense? Uh, so, okay. So don't look at it as I go to the heater, no voltage, I go back, I find voltage. Look at it, I have voltage there. Yeah, you have, you have voltage, voltage there, from line one. It has to be here, and it has to be at this point in order for my meter to give me 240. That means... The problem is not on line two, the problem is on line one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So one because when I move this meter lead back to here, it says zero. When I go here, I got 240. So I lost it somewhere in that path. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, between, you lost it somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. but you're, and vice versa, if I said zero volts here, mm -hmm. after that test, that's when I take my meter and put it here and move this one to here. So if it said zero here, but I move it back here, and now I got 240. Mm -hmm. Well, that means line one is good, but line two is not. Right. And now my problem is on this side right. of the circuit. So when you go to the load that's not working, motor or heating element or whatever, and that load is not got voltage, no voltage. I'm not worried about the part. I'm wondering why am I not getting power to the part? Because that's what makes it work. Now my problem is, is it on this side of the circuit or that side of the circuit? Which one is not coming down? So when I go back here and I find the voltage here, but I don't have it here, I lost it from here to here. If I don't have it here, and I go back to here and I don't have it, then I bring it down, and then I move the other meter lead this way, the other side of the circuit. If I have it here and not here, then my problem's on this side of the circuit. And with the dryer we talked about today, I had voltage. I didn't have voltage here and here. I had zero here. When I went back to here, it still said zero. So when I went to here and moved this one to here, now I had 240. And if I would have backtracked like to here, I still would have said 0, 0, 0, 240, my problem would have been this red wire. And if you looked at the picture, it was a red wire from the motor back up to the back. This red wire right here, there's a red wire right, right here. That's this red wire right here running down. And that red wire runs down in the here that goes to the motor underneath that bulkhead panel right there and the motor's in the front. Right. So I couldn't do the test physically on the motor unless I was on the front of the machine. But I could check here and go to the side. So I got power here but I don't have power there. Then my problem, the only thing in between is that switch, a centrifugal switch. Yeah. That's, good. That's the only thing yeah. from the heater to the line two. Yeah. It's the only thing it could be. Or a wire. Now, very rarely do wires go bad. That wire we saw in that picture, we'll look at it one more time. That wire in that picture was bad. Yeah, that was. Look at how bad that wire is. That was. It burnt right off. I mean, is that. But that was caused by the installer not installing it properly. Yeah, that burnt the red, the how it yeah. looked, why it looked so deformed like well, that. Well, what happened is it was loose. Mm. So when it's loose, the wire runs hot. Gotcha. And over a period of time, it gets so hot mm. that the insulation around the outside <laughs> starts bubbling out. Bless you. Thanks, starts bubbling out and, and, and melting. Yes. So eventually the wire corroded, mm. 
That whole terminal looked changed color. Look at these yeah. two terminals. Yeah, Look at that one. Totally burnt out. These are factory crimps. Which he could. This is part of the power cord. He could have easily. Well, no, I can't say easily, but if he would have did a thorough check, it could have saved him money and time. Well, it didn't save some money. It cost me money. Well, it cost, <laughs> could have saved you some money and him some and time. And time, right? Yep. I would have got the you job completed the first time or second okay. time out. Now, yeah. let me ask you a question. Customer buys this machine. It's three months out of warranty. Mm -hmm. Three months into warranty. It's got mm -hmm. a one-year warranty. It's three mm -hmm. months old. Mm -hmm. Do you fix that under warranty? Yes. Have, no, 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 it's not included. The code. They don't cover the cord. First of all, does the cord come with the machine? No. Oh, no. no. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you right. buy the cord when you buy the machine, usually the manufacturer will guarantee the cord. Did that happen because the cord was a piece of junk? No, because the tech didn't properly connect it to the, the installer. The installer. The we like to say installer or customer if they right. installed it. Or customer, right. Okay. Yeah. But so you just said the cord wait, was no good. Yes, but if an installer improperly installed it, is it the manufacturer's fault? No, but no. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah, no, but no. Yeah. But you build stuff for a living mm -hmm. and you sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, the customer gets somebody else to pick it up and deliver it and install it, and when it gets there, a drawer is broken. You built a cabinet, and the drawer in the cabinet is broken. Now, you know when you built it, all drawers are working fine. Are you going to warranty the worker or did the installer mess it up when he delivered it? So you as the manufacturer, would you want to pay somebody or pay to fix something that the delivery guy broke? No. No, because warranties only cover defect in manufacturing. That wasn't done by the manufacturer. Right. It was done by the installer. So that's the customer responsibility. It's usually the customer's responsibility. Now, customers sometimes don't like to hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here's the two options if you really want to be politically correct right. is one, man, the installer didn't install that properly. You need to call them back to come back and fix it. Right. Because if you're not going to cover it under warranty. Mm -hmm. Now, what do some manufacturers? Some manufacturers don't want to hear it, but the tech might just say, well, I'll just say that that part was defective and I'll order and install it because I'm not going to have to send the old one back. So if I say it's defective, I have to have a good enough explanation of what defective was so that mm -hmm. the manufacturer pays for the job. Yeah. And here's the thing, you know, like the direct drive washers, and I've said this over the years, the direct drive washer, when it's installed, has a yellow strap in the back that you would pull out. And on the bottom of the washing machine are three locking pins, mm -hmm. and they have a cotter pin run through it to hold the pin in place. When you pull the yellow strap out, you're pulling the, the cotter pin out so that the pin will drop down and the basket can move freely. Mm -hmm. Well, if customers weren't pulling the yellow strap out and when that machine spin, it would walk across the floor because it didn't have the move mobility of the suspension being able to move so that the cabinet would be separate from the basket. But then when it's the shipping pins are in, now the cabinet and the basket move together and it starts walking. To the point it could rip the pipes right out of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so the manufacturer said, you know what? We're tired of this. What happens is the tech says, oh, uh, found that the pin was stuck or this and that. When they found out most of the time, customers weren't pulling, pulling the strap out. Because they just had the strap coming from the back, taped to the back. It's a big old sticker, remove this on installation. So I said, we'll figure it out. So they took the power cord, like a, like a regular plug. Let me see if I got a regular plug. They took a regular plug like this, and they had like a little loop, and the yellow strap was into the yellow loop. And it was real fat, so you couldn't actually pull it out unless you cut it apart. And then they put the cord in the hole in the back panel, and the cord was all tied up. So in order for you to plug the machine in, you had to remove the strap or because the plug would reach the wall. Right. So what did the manufacturer do? The manufacturer put the yellow strap so the customer would have to pull the yellow strap out to plug it into the wall. Mm -hmm. What do you think the customer did? Cut the yellow strap <laughs> <laughs> and left it in the machine. Didn't do everything but pull it out. Yeah. 
So that makes sense. Here's one other thing. Same machine. Yeah. Yeah. The washing machine, the motor is attached to the transmission with just two spring clips, mm -hmm. just clipped on. And the pump was attached to the motor with two more separate clips. Well, guys went out there and found that the shipping strap wasn't removed. And they're like, well, the problem is not the manufacturer. The problem is because they didn't have it installed properly. Right. Right. I can't put down a removed shipping strap and bill Whirlpool for it. Whirlpool right. looked at me and said, it's not our fault. Right. I'm not paying you to remove a shipping strap. Mm -hmm. You can't leave the customer hanging, so what does the tech do? The tech says, well, i got to make up something's wrong with the machine, so the ma manufacturer pays me for the job. Yeah. So they put spring clip to motor, pop loose, mm -hmm. reinstalled the spring clip, checks okay. So after about a million of them, and I'm being hypothetical, right. Whirlpool looks at it and says, wow, we're paying a lot of service calls for this washer. Mm -hmm. Then clips coming off the motor, it must be... <laughs> The machine must be jumping around during shipping, popping them clips off. What can we do to prevent those clips from coming off? I tell you what, on the end of the clip, we'll put a little hole in there, mm -hmm. and we'll put a screw through the clip into the motor, so that they won't take the motor down now. We got two screws we have to take off before we can unclip it. Mm -hmm. It don't need those screws. Mm -hmm. It needs the screws because techs were putting down that the clips kept coming off. Because the shipping oh, straps were removed. What you say, but but the manufacturer had to redesign its construction. Mm -hmm. And now it's harder for us on everyday level to work on it because now we got to take extra screws out. Only because someone said they did something they didn't do. Right. It's the same thing with those microwave door switches. Oh, yeah. The wires, they kept saying the wire was loose. Now they put like a little... Thing you have to press mm -hmm. on the actual terminal of the wire so you can unplug the wire. The reason why? Because a technician went in there and it was just a customer instruction or something, or installation problem. Mm -hmm. So they explained to the customer how it works. Oh, found loose wire in primary door switch, reinstalled wire, checks okay. Mm -hmm. So they put these wires with these locking tabs on there now so the wires don't come off. Right. So a lot of things you guys will see, when I first started working on machines, they didn't have them. Some of them are not necessary upgrades or design changes that needed to be done. But just realize that they read your notes under warranty and extended contract. And they try to figure out what could they do to prevent things from happening. So making stuff up, even though that gets you paid on that one job, doesn't necessarily Helps. help you. Yeah. It makes things worse. Mm -hmm. All right. So 